What do you do if your Messerschmitt BF109 just isn't cutting it anymore? You bolt another one onto the side. You call it a BF109Z or Zwinich. That's exactly what Messerschmitt did. I've got a kit of one to make. Let's see what you get inside the box right here on Gary's Stuff. Hello there, I'm Gary, welcome to my channel, welcome back. If you've been here before, today I'm looking inside the box of the kit of the week. That kit is the Messerschmitt BF109Z in 172nd scale from A model. Now if you're thinking about buying one of these, want to know what you get for your money, this is very much the video for you. If you'd like to see how one's actually put together and made, then that will be in the build video later this week. How will I know when that is published, I hear you ask? Well, the best thing to do, if you haven't done so already, is subscribe to the channel and hit the bell, and you'll be notified of all my future content as it becomes available. And, of course, anything you like on the channel, please do give it the old imperial thumbs up on the like button below, because every like counts. Now, if you'd like to support the channel in a bit more of a concrete way, you can do that through Super Thanks by becoming a channel member or by using one of my online affiliate programs. Or, like Gavin Dalton, you can send me something to build. Gavin sent me this kit to make. Gav, thanks you so very much. I absolutely love it. Thanks a lot, mate. OK, let's get on then and have a look inside the box of the BF109Z in 172nd scale from a model. So here's the box of the A model BF109Z in 172nd scale. Nice piece of artwork on the front here. It says 172nd here, product code 72217. On this side, there's a piece of history of the aircraft written in English here, it's in Russian, which tells you this is a relatively old A model aircraft because A model now being Ukrainian wouldn't have Russian on the side there. At this side, again, um, this is uh, in Polish here because it's imported in Poland and then to elsewhere. Again, things here in English and in Russian, just general bits and pieces, and the ends have the product code, scale, and of course, a reprise of the artwork at this end. This is in English at the other end, in Russian. Let's have a look at what's inside the box. So we have the instruction sheet here. We have some bits of plastic in a plastic bag, and we have a decal sheet and we'll have a look at all these bits and pieces in a bit more detail. This first frame is the piloted side of the aircraft, the piloted fuselage that so has a cutout for the canopy, it has the cockpit area here, um, also has propeller, engine, stubs, prop boss and so on. This next frame is the unpiloted side, you can see the canopies fared over completely and um, they haven't just replicated the other um, frame and then just added a, a, a block over it. It is actually modelled completely as a, an unpiloted aircraft, which I think is very good myself. I'm very impressed by that. And the place where the, uh, the cockpit is on the other side of the aircraft, there's just this big thing, BF109Z here. So that's very good. The third frame here is basically the wings and the tailplane sections. So the wing, the bottom wing is molded in one piece, which is very impressive. And then the top halves of the wings just go on here, of course. And the tailplane is a single piece that sits between the fins on the two halves of the aircraft. And finally, the last frame here, this is the uh, top surface of the center section here. Undercarriage legs, 
um, gun pods, seat for the pilot, uh, that's the headrest, the armor plate for the pilot. I guess that's probably a gun sight. A couple of little balance horns there. That's the, I suspect that's the control column. That's a, a trim wheel of sorts. Um, yeah, all very straightforward. The transparency uh, for the pilot doesn't come on a frame of its own, just obviously been nipped off of a larger frame, a little bit flash on the side here. Um, single piece, don't have it open, uh, but it will probably do. If we have a closer look at the plastic, it's okay. I mean, the scribing is you know, reasonably basic, but it is at least sunken. It's not raised panel lines, they are sunken lines, which is something. But they, as you can see, they do look a bit basic and a bit scratchy. Uh, but it's 172nd. I'm sure we can do something with it. This is the part of that's fed over on the other, on the sort of the non-flying side of the um, aircraft, non-pilot side. And as you can see, it's actually molded that way specifically. It's not like a piece of mold that's had something just about bunged on top. It actually looks like it's molded specifically. Which is nice, which is good to see. This is a, a, a low pressure mold, so it's um, a, intended for low runs of kits. Um, you can see here the feed gates go all the way straight into all the joints and top of the fin there, which isn't very helpful. But again, these are low pressure kits and they aren't intended. They are very much intended for people who know what they're doing. Interesting that they've still gone with the interior detail here, which obviously you can't see on the aircraft because it's all fed in. So I suspect the mold here, this, this part of the mold has been the original one with the cockpit and they've just re-sculpted this bit of the mold itself. So it's molded that way and that looks good. It looks fine. Again, if we look at the wings, you know, the the details scribed in okay it still looks a bit scratchy rather than really carefully made but again low pressure molds fairly inexpensively made i would say but they'll do um interesting that the undercarriage just sort of sits into here rather than trying to drill holes for each leg and have the all four legs like that at least each pair of legs is going to poke at the same angle because they they go through a common thing so you just got to get two things lined up then all four legs will be lined up a um, little bit flashy here and a little bit of stuff around there again they are low pressure molds not used maybe a little overused who knows but they will produce a bit of flash here and there because the the, uh, the force holding the molds together is also a lot lower because these are lower pressure injection pressures so here again the um, injection gate goes straight onto the, the round bit of the wing which is a really annoying thing but hey ho the uh, leading edge slats here you can't have those open which is a pity because um, sitting on the ground they would have been open because they're spring loaded against the airstream so they would be loaded open on the ground rather um, the upper surfaces look okay again a little devoid of detail I mean you could go over these with a riveter if you really wanted to pick out some rivets I'm not sure how prominent the rivets were on a BF109 wing to be honest um, yeah the, the moulding's okay it's not brilliant but then it's not terrible either not really awful. Um, I've seen a lot worse. A little bit of um, heat issue here. You can see just that, that sort of orange peel look there. That's a, a heat issue with where this piece of plastic is being injected. You can see it's bubbled slightly on there. I think that's probably overheating in that part of the mould. The other end is okay. Again, again actually, you can see that swirl. That's from the injection. That's because the plastic, I think this is where the plastic is a little bit too fluid because it's too hot. It forms like a swirly pattern as it sort of gets blasted in. And then you can see these 
patterns here where, where the two bits of plastic meet up in the middle of the mould. Consider discolouring and slight surface bubbling as well, slight, slight sort of orange peeling on the surface. Again, I think that's probably been a little too warm in there. But there we go. It's not it's not like an impossible. I can do a very very fine um, sand. I don't want to do too much sanding, obviously, because I don't want to lose these ribs. But I can probably this part can be sanded up a little bit just to make it a bit smoother. But there we go. The inside of the other part, the piloted halves, are. There's quite a lot of moulding in there. I mean, you know, with a bit of um, bit of dry brushing, that will pick out nicely. It's not impossible to make something look, you know, half decent out of that. There's quite a lot of detail, really. And the problem's going to be, of course, you've got a canopy on top of there, and the canopy's really thick and quite distorted, I guess. So you might not see all the work you do, but at least you know it's there. Again, the injection gates very very prominent on all the bits that you're going to have to sand down it's not there of course because that's uh, that's not so much of an issue because the rudder is going to cover that bit there's the floor of the carpet yeah, it's, it's all right it's okay again you're not going to see very much in there anyway and then and then finally the other bits and pieces uh, the Pilot seat looks okay, slightly strange, but looks okay. Um, might put a paper harness in there, you know, just some strips of masking tape. Uh, this, I guess, is a trim wheel of some sort. Again, it's a bit flashy on the edges. These are gun pods here, these are tail wheels. They're okay, not brilliant, but they're okay. Main wheels here. You can see there's, there's a, they've had a go at doing the tire pattern, that sort of um, radial tire pattern there on the tires. The wheels are single piece, so you don't have to worry about joining them together. So, But then, of course, they're going to have a mold seam all the way down the middle, which we're going to have to sand off. So we'll lose the track there. But then I guess, you know, you know they could lose the track quite a lot anyway, just through use um, as part of the Parts of the cabin, I guess here. Oh, here's the instrument panel. Actually, instrument panel is moulded quite nicely. I may just dry brush that because that looks okay, and it looks like the faces of some of the instruments might come out as well. Like the uh, speed, uh, the sorry, the artificial horizon and things like that. They they look like you may get some detail. If if not, I can always sort of paint it in. Yeah, not too bad. Here you can see the undercarriage legs that come as pairs. I, I don't know how well they're going to sit in, how accurately they're going to sit in, firmly they're going to sit in, but we'll worry about that later on. This, is, of course, is the um, upper surface of the intermediate part of the wing. Yeah. Again, fairly basic, very scratchy looking um, mouldings, but uh, they'll be okay. We'll, we'll make them look all right. Cool. And the canopy we were looking at earlier. Yeah, big, big bits of flash here, big chunk of feed gate here. And as you can see, it's not the best finished transparency I've ever seen. But we'll mask it off and it will be okay. You know, it'd be interesting to make these tiny little masks, actually. Of course, I've got to mask this little triangle off here as well, which will be fun. Um, it feels like it might be an issue with fittings. It's quite thick and quite rough at the bottom. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Decal sheets. The aircraft comes with one set of markings. Um, I mean, there was only ever one actually built, and that got lost in an air raid, so they didn't really fly it all that much. So there's not an awful lot to go on. I may, some of these things I may get from other kits if I have some spare bits and pieces 
you can see the instrument panel here um, crosses for the upper and lower surfaces these are um, swastikas that have been cut in half so if you want to use them you can cut them out and lay them over each other at least then a model haven't printed them themselves and have therefore uh, therefore they have abided by the law in many countries including not least of which Germany and Austria of course plenty of stencils here don't know how accurate those are yet we'll have a look but yeah generally there's not much color there's, there's basically just a tiny bit of yellow tiny bit of red mainly just black um, but let's have a close-up look to where the colors actually are and see what they look like okay have a close-up look now the instrument panel here looks okay to me this is the uh, half millimeter pencil lead I use here to show you scale at this size I can see the instruments actually are pretty well done I have to say um, the crosses are okay the problem here really you can see a hint of it there is the registration with the red and this it's gone completely wrong here um, you can see this is a registration princess registration mark and you can see the red is clearly not lined up with the black um, as over here is also again red and black are definitely not lined up on those registration marks and so they're not on the decals as well the yellow actually seems okay the 87 octane markings there look all right where the red's on its own it's okay it's it's sharp enough i mean you know look at the size of these point 2.3 mil nicht betreten you know don't, don't, no step they don't look bad at all um, yeah, i think there's a push here or something or something like that um you know when they get really really small they get very unreadable but you know what a lot of them do i think they're, they're very slightly sort of fuzzier than you'll get on modern cartograph but they're not bad I don't know what the actual um, quality of them is yet, as in you know how well they stand being taken off with water. But here, you know, it's not bad at all. That is way, way, way less than half a mil. That's like a quarter of a millimeter, and it's readable. So actually, well done, a model or whoever actually prints them for you. Um, they've done a pretty good job, apart from. The uh, red black registration, which is slightly off, um, which shows up really much here on these, these markings. But it's not like the end of the world, let's be honest. The instruction leaflet, so um, gatefold A4, four page A4, it's like A3 folded in half to make A4. Reprise of the box art on the front here in black and white. A reprise of the um, stuff that's on the side the sort of brief history of the aircraft very very brief history of the aircraft in english and russian it does actually say just here the model is executed on technology short run so it's a short run technology which is a low pressure technology and is intended only for experienced modelers so it's saying right there you know you're going to need a few skills to actually make this you can't be a complete novice and expect this to just sort of click together and well done you uh, you will have to do a little bit of work, but it's not, it doesn't look like it's going to be the end of the earth. The symbology is here with all of its translations, again, English and Russian. Um, colors here are all humbral uh, references, so, um, but they have included the RLM numbers as well if you want to use other types. And of course, you can convert these humbral numbers. They may be old humbral numbers anyway, I don't know. Um, I have a feeling sometimes Humbrol doesn't, you know, that Humbrol 30 dark green, that's REF dark green, that's not RLM 71. It's close to RLM 71, but I don't think it actually is RLM 71. So these days you would probably go for um, a brand that gives you the, those actual RLM numbers rather, equivalents rather than go to the nearest Humbrol thing, which is what these probably are. But you know what, they're okay they're okay well black is black i guess and white is white um so yeah that's all very good then the instructions themselves well they're fairly short i mean like 
three quarters of this first page is the layout of the frames and the decal sheet and then there's a few like um, almost like exploded diagram type instructions here and as you can see there really isn't all that much to it and then the one color scheme so yeah looks all pretty straight forward there it is then not a bad looking kit i think you'll agree i'm intrigued by these twin fuselage aircraft as you'll know from the video i made last year i think hopefully a link has popped up somewhere up here check it out if you haven't seen it before i'm absolutely intrigued by twin fuselage aircraft and this looks exactly the sort of thing i like to build it's a, a what's if design there was only one of them ever made and it's a wacky idea you just bolt two existing fuselages together with a bit in the middle and hey presto it's going to be twice as good uh, it's crazy but you know what kind of works the uh f82 p82 f82 twin mustang kind of worked so whatever anyway i think it's going to be fun to build if you'd like to see how i get on then please do make sure you've subscribed to the channel hit the bell there and you'll be notified of all my future content as it is published and of course if you like anything you see on my channel please do give it the old imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts Thank you so very much for watching. Hope to see you again very soon on the channel. Take good care now and goodbye.